Hey guys, I'm Catherine, and today I'm going to show you some of the basics you should know for your technical interview. And so to start off, we are going to open Sublime, and I'm just going to go to Spotlight here. And I have Sublime. If you don't, I'll put the download where you can find it down in the description. And you are also going to need the JDK, and I'll link again another place where you can download that. And we are going to be doing this in Java, and so I love Java, but you can also do this in other programming languages. And I'm going to show you literally the basics you need to know for your technical interview. And so some of these interviews are going to be like in a Google Doc, like if you have to like say, hey, this is a program that I could write, but I'm not going to write it right now. Like usually some of them will be in a Google Doc. Others you'll use something called CoderPad or something like that where you can actually run your code in the browser. And then other ones it'll be like a bring your own machine, you know, and you bring it and you do it all yourself. And so that's what these tutorials are going to focus on. And so I'm just gonna do a quick run and compile. How do we do stuff in Sublime and how do we make our programs actually do things? And so I'm gonna go down here here and down here we have all these languages we can use in Sublime and so I am just going to go to Java and here we are we're in Java great those are comments and so in here we're just gonna go class hello world and we're just gonna make a simple hello world thing we're gonna have our public static void main and our input is going to be a string of arrays which are the arguments and then open that up and you might think this is really basic, this is really easy. Well, sometimes it takes a while to get into the cycle of not using an IDE and just using a text editor to run your code because that's sometimes what you have to do in technical interviews. And so here we're just going to do a simple hello world printout. We'll go system.out.println. Here we are. Just hello world. All is good hello to the world. And now to compile this, first we should save it. And we're just going to call it hello world. And I'm putting it in my desktop. And to compile this, we need to compile it before we can run it so that it is in the right type of code that the computer can read. So this is a high level programming language. And so we'll say here, Java is high level, meaning it is something that's easier to understand for us programmers, like writing code, but it's not necessarily something the machine can read all on its own. It needs to be compiled into an, like an assembly language or something like that, machine language, so that the computer can actually understand what's going on. And because we have these compilers, it's why we can write simple English like this versus, you know, 0f whatever it is. And so how do we compile this so that we can run it? Well, there's two ways. One, you can go up here and you can go to tools and you can say build system and make sure this is on Java C. It should be built in already. If you don't, check out the JDK, make sure you have that. And once that's all set up, you can do command B and it will build it and you'll get this little window down here and it'll say it's finished, yay. And so if we get out of this, we'll see we have the Java file that we saved earlier. And then when we just compiled this you know, Java file, we created this hello world class. Another way you can create this class, if we just you know, drag that guy down to the trash, we can go into terminal. And we won't want to do it here because this is our home. So we need to CD into our desktop or wherever you have this file located. And we'll go ls, there's our hello world. To compile this, instead of doing it in Sublime, you can also do it here. And we'll go Java C. And here we're going to write hello world.java. And this is just the Java file. We'll hit enter. All is good. And notice our hello world class file opened up right over there. And so how do we run this? We have written this program and we want to run it. Well, we'll do Java and then just the name of the class. And so here it'll be hello world. And there it printed hello world. And if it had other stuff going on, it would do that in the background as well. And so here we just kind of went through the whole cycle. We created a file in Sublime, we wrote it out, we compiled it into a class file, and then we ran that program in the terminal. And so these two commands are gonna be key if you ever have to like bring your own machine to an interview and stuff like that. And so I kind of just jumped right into this and showed you how to compile and do things in Sublime, but let's back up a bit. What does a technical interview comprise of? Well, if we open that up again, one, you're gonna have some behavioral questions. And so this is gonna be like, who are you? Like, what do you like to do? What do you like? 
You know, what projects have you done? Do you like working with people? Do you have you done experience in the past? Talk about your resume, blah, blah, blah. Those are the usual things that you'll get even if you're not doing a technical interview. And then the second part will usually be like softer program me questions. And so those are gonna be like, what is a linked list? What is a queue? What is recursion? Like, what's the difference between a queue and a stack? You know, those kind of lighter stuff like, oh, just explain how this works, but you're not going to code anything. So these are usually not codey. And if you get past these two rounds, and sometimes these will be in different actual interviews. So you'll have like one interview that's behavioral and another that's programming. Or you may have like one interview that kind of combines these two. But usually if you're applying, usually if you're applying to do something technical, you're going to have these harder programming questions. And these are where you where you actually code. And so these are where you're going to actually code things. You're actually going to write a program and they're going to expect you to do that. And that is what we are focusing on. We, you can, you know, you just got to know yourself for the behavioral. You have to know kind of how code works. And if you're not sure about like this type of stuff, you should check out the 30 days of code series. And that really gives you a whole rounded, you know, how does the code work and what does it actually all mean? But this series is going to focus on like, okay, we're coding, we need to do stuff, and how do we do it in Sublime when we do not have an IDE to help us out? We do it all ourselves. And so an example of this will be if we open a new file, we are actually going to do one of these harder programmy, you know, questions. And so a common question in the programming world, and we will save this as a job as a Java file, and we are going to call it FizzBuzz. And this is very common in interviewing. You're usually going to have like one easier question and then they'll hit you with a harder question. And this is like kind of the type of easier question you might get in a technical screening, meaning they'll send you kind of a link like, hey, you have to finish this problem in 60 minutes on HackerRank or on, you know, another system. And that is what this problem is going to be kind of like. And so we'll go and create a class here because that's what you always do in Java. And we have this class here. And what is this FizzBuzz problem? I told you about it. It's a thing. What is it actually? Well, basically what it is, is it wants you to write a program that prints the numbers 1 to 100. But for multiples of 3, you're going to print fizz instead of the number. For multiples of 5, you're going to print buzz instead of the number. And for numbers that are multiples of 3 and 5, you're going to print fizz buzz instead of the number. And so what did that actually mean? Well, we're going to go through 1 to 100. We're going to do something there. And for each of these numbers, if it's a multiple of 3, we're going to print out fizz. If it's a multiple of 5, we're going to print out buzz. And if it's a multiple of 3 and 5, we're going to print out fizz buzz. And so notice how I kind of explained the problem back to you. It's really important that you do that in an interview. You need to make sure like, hey, I understand the problem and I'm going to explain it back to you. And one thing I forgot here is that otherwise we print the number. And so basically the interviewer is going to give you a question and you should be able to like write kind of pseudocode here and be like, okay, this is what we are really doing. Is this the same thing that you just said before? And so you're both on the same page before you even start coding. And so it's really good to write out pseudocode before you actually do anything because then you can make sure you're on the right track before you get deep into the code. And so your, you know, interviewer is going to say, hey, this looks good. Let's do some code. And so great. What did we forget up here? Class. Um, <laughs> there we go. Remembering things. Okay, so what do we need in this FizzBuzz class? Well, we need to do a public, you know, static, void, main, you know, this whole thing. If we actually write out main and hit enter, it kind of does it for us. But you may not be using Sublime in the future or whatever, so you may not get access and know that. And so make sure memorizing this would be a good idea. And so here we're going to do some things. And so if we look up at our pseudocode, like even if we forgot the problem, we always have this little mind map to guide us along. And so we want to go from 1 to 100. So we'll use a for loop. You know, that sounds reasonable. And I'm just going to write this out. So we have an int i that's going to start off at 1 because we want to start off at 1. And we're going to go i to 100, and then we're going to increment i each time. So that way we can get access to every single number. And so here we are. We have our int i. And now we really need to think about something. We A good question to ask the interviewer is if 1 to 100, is that inclusive? And so a good question would be, 
is this inclusive? Meaning, do we want to check one and we want to check 100? Like we want to make sure we get everything, like we want to get one, everything between that and 100? Or do we just want to get one to 99 inclusive? Or do we want to get, you know, two to 100? Or is it exclusive and that we don't get one or 100, we just get what's in between? Like understand, like what is that relationship? That's a really good question to ask. A bad question to ask would be like, what is a for loop? That's a bad question to ask. And like, how do I use a for loop? Like, I don't, those are bad questions. Your questions that you ask the interviewer should be about specifying the problem. You wanna make sure you understand the full problem before you go crazy with anything else. So here we are, we have this thing, and now we need to figure out multiples. And so how do we figure out if like a given i is a multiple of three? Like, how do we do that? Well, if i divided by three, is a whole number, then we're good to go because there's no remainder. So is there a weighing code for us to do this? Well, there is, and it's something called mod. And so knowing how to use mod is super important for your interviews. And so if you go if, you know, i mod three, meaning if i is divided by three, what is the remainder? That's what this is going to return. And so if that remainder is zero, then we want to print out fizz. And so we'll go system.out.println fizz. Cool. Next part. If I, and now we want to know multiple of five up here, so we'll go mod five equals equals zero. Then system.out.println, what do we want to print? Buzz. Good to go, good to go. Then we'll go else if I mod three equals zero and I mod five equals zero, then, you know, we want to do the full thing, system.out.println, fizz buzz, and we are good to go. Otherwise, we need to print out the number, and the number here would just be i. Cool, so this should work, right? Hmm, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. So we'll go command b to build it, make sure we have no errors, it finished, so we're good to go. We'll get out of this for a bit and then we will ls we have the fizz buzz we have the class because we just compiled and we'll do java fizz buzz and here's some things looks accurate but is it really let's look at 15. 15 is a multiple of 3 and it is a multiple of 5 because 3 times 5 equals 15. and so if it's a multiple of 3 and 5 we should print out fizz buzz but here we only have fizz that's a problem. Why did this happen? Well, say 15 is i. So we have 15s here. If 15 mod 3 equals 0, this is true. So we're going to system.out.println fizz. And then we'll jump down here. Oh, we go back and we increment i and we're at 16. So we just printed out fizz. The way if statements work is it only executes one block. So if the condition is true, it'll execute that block and then jump down and get not ever execute any of the else's, not even check any of the other if conditions. This is a problem. And so what we can do to fix this is if we actually just copy and paste this down here and we'll make this full screen again. If we change these conditions, if we change that to be up here and we get rid of this part, then we check if both conditions are true before we get to these. And so if we ever get to this case, then it must have not been a multiple of three and five. And so these can print out safely. And we'll need to take out the fizz there and then we'll need to put in the fuzz, buzz, yeah, there. And so we can actually just comment all of this out because we know it's incorrect because the ordering of operations, the ordering of the ifs here matter which is important to note. Here we go. There we are, we'll save, we'll do command B. We finished and then we'll go to terminal here and we will go, and we'll also compile here. So we'll go to Java C and how do we do it? We go fizzbuzz.java just to remember how to do it and everything works out. And so to run it, we'll go Java fizzbuzz We'll run it and now if we go up to 15 now we have fizz buzz and fizz is what's supposed to print out if it's like a multiple of three buzz if it's a multiple of five fizz is a multiple of three so that's good or sixes and yeah so our program works another way we can do this problem is if 
we do something with like our string s equals, let me just write this out, what happens if true, and then what, what happens if false. Okay, so another way we could do this problem is what if we had a string variable? And notice like, okay, so fizz, buzz, buzz, and fizz are all very similar. If i is a multiple of three, then we add fizz. If i is a multiple of five, we add buzz. And if it's a multiple of both, we do fizz buzz. And so what we could do here is we could say like, if it's a multiple of three, then we'd wanna concatenate fizz. And if it's a multiple of five, we'll wanna con con concatenate buzz. And we could do it in the order where we check i mod 3 equals equals 0 first. And so I'm going to leave this up to you, but this is another way you can do an if, and we'll have a capital S there. This is another way you can do an if statement in a single line. And so I'll leave that to you to see if you can try to rewrite this or rewrite this bit of code with this thing and so that you're not repeating yourself with fizz buzz, fizz, you know, and all of that. And then you can just print out the string at the end. I'll leave that up to you. And so... It's really shocking, but 80% of people get this problem wrong in a technical interview. It's insane. So what did you, like, what did you even need to know for this question? Well, you needed to know how to create a variable and how to access it, initialize it, all of that with the int i equals zero or int i equals one. You needed to know how to print things to the console over here. You need to know how to use the mod function to somehow get, you know, figure out, okay, is it a multiple of something or not? You needed to know how to use an if statement, a control flow type of thing. You needed to know how to use Boolean operators, how to create a function, how to call a function, and you really didn't even know that, need to know that because you just needed to put it inside the main. You could have put this in a fizzbuzz function, but you didn't even need to know that. So it's very basic stuff here. And the fact that 80% of people can't get this right is like, come on people, we're computer scientists, let's go. And so not every programming problem will be this easy. This was pretty fairly, I mean, it's pretty, you know, logical. If you did the 30 days of code series, all the stuff that's covered here is covered by day five or six, you know, in the series. So it's pretty, you know, basics. And what does it mean for something to be harder than this problem? Well, interview problems that use data structures, you know, those are harder because you have to manage data. Sometimes you have to mem manage memory if you're using like C++ or something. Things that have data structures where you have to iterate through, you have to do stuff to it, those are harder than these types of problems because you have to manage more stuff. And so that is what we will be doing next week. We'll be going through the data structures and what you need to know for your interviews. The code that's here will also be down below and I'll put some helpful links about FizzBuzz and stuff like that. And I hope you learned something from this video and I will see you next Friday. Bye.